Hey everybody, this is No Excuses. I'm your host, Rodney Arbona, and I'm here with my very special guest, Mike Rispoli. How are you, Mike? I'm great, Rodney. Nice to see you. Mike, we've enjoyed your talent so many different ways this Sunday. <laughs> one of the things I like to always ask folks, what is one of the parts that you've played that you kind of like the most? Um, well, you know, I play similar roles. Yes. Uh, I'm usually a cop or a crook. That's right. So, um, I, I don't know. There's there's actually it, it's got to do with the project that you're on, the people you're working with. That's what it is. I did a little film many years ago called Two Family House, T W O Family House, um, and uh, I love doing that role because it was um, we shot it in 23 days. It was a low budget, but it did really well, and and uh, it came out great. So I guess I enjoyed that one very much. Of course, you know. There's some uh, other projects that I enjoyed as well, but um, but that one was special. Does it ever surprise you when you have a low-budget film doing so great? Oh, yeah. As opposed to a big-budget film you expected to do fantastic? Yeah. Well, listen, man, you know, I've done some big-budget films that went nowhere. So <laughs> even though as big a budget as they were, nobody saw them. You know? So those are always a little disappointing, only because you figure you got the muscle of the studio behind you, and you figure it, it's going to, you know... Um, it's going to take off and go places. But what's great, what's really exciting about a low-budget film that you do when uh, it gets uh, noted either um, um, critically or commercially is that you say, "Wow, look what we made from just this lump of clay," you know? Right. And and then you know, and it takes off that way. So that's real exciting. You know, that's that makes you feel. Um, I don't know. It just makes it more special. It's kind of like watching a child grow. Nice. That was, I would say that. That's exactly right. Rodney's exactly right. When you got into acting, uh, was that, or rather, let me rephrase it. When you were growing up, was acting something you really wanted to do? Yeah, I'll tell you. I don't know how much time you got. But <laughs> I, um, so I you call loved, the shots, Mike. <laughs> I loved doing plays when I was a kid, you know, in, in, um, uh, in grammar school, you know, mm -hmm. that band grammar school I went to. And I was always doing the plays, and that was up to fifth grade. And then you went to junior high school. And in junior high school, you had to try out for the play. So That's right. I tried out for the play in sixth grade, and I did not make the play. Wow. And that was like, boom, that rejection just knocked me out. So I never went out for another play. Really? Uh, but I always kept an eye on the play. Sure. Because I always wanted to do them, but I did not want to be rejected again. And then when I was a senior in high school, you know, you come into your own in high school somewhere. I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do a play. When, I'm, when else am I going to do a play if I don't do it now? Right. And I did the play, and I, I, you know, it was great. I loved it. And then I went to school, and I pursued it, you know. So um, that's why, uh, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. So you, You're going to edit this anyway, right? You, you went from plays into film most of the time. Yeah, but you, what was your question before, prior to that? That's okay. The question was, as you were getting into acting yeah. at a young age, was yeah. it something you oh, truly something wanted to do? Oh, something I always want to do. Sorry. Yes, yeah, there that's we okay. Go. Okay, we'll pick it up from here. So anyways, <laughs> I went to school for it, and I just loved it, and I took to it. And I went to college. I finished early. I went down to the city to an acting school, and that was a two-year program. I finished that, and I got right into, you know, off-Broadway theater, and then I started a theater company off-off-Broadway and stuff. But always, you know, you want to do uh, films, you know, you want to do TV. Sure. You always have that on your mind as a young actor. And eventually that came around. You know, it's a lot of struggle, it's a tough business, but, um, but eventually, you know, I ended up doing films. So yes, the answer is I always wanted to That's act. That's excellent. Yeah. I just want, you know, you never know how it's going to come your way. What is the difference for you and the challenge for you when you go from Broadway to film? Um, the challenge is, well, stage is a little different than screen. Screen, the camera's right here on you. So right. up on a movie screen, your face is this big, you know, and on, and on the stage, it's not that big. As long as our heads don't get that big, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's in the back, you know, you got to reach the back row with your voice and you have to, uh, you know, you have to perform for them in, them in the back row. Uh, the camera takes care of that for you, you know, because they just move the camera closer. Um, so those are the different challenges, just, you know, a little bigger, a little smaller uh, when it comes to your acting choices. If you had your choice, because you do play either a cop or a criminal, yeah. where would you prefer to play? Between the two? Yes. Um, I just like well-written roles. I, I prefer them. I prefer uh, solid family men. I prefer, um, you know, playing those guys, which you could be as a cop and sure. frankly even as a crook if they're, if they're written well. 
But, um, uh, you know, a well-rounded, uh, deep character, I guess, one that has depth and layers. Uh, and that has to do with the script. So when you find a great script, you know, with a great character, you say, oh, I can make this work. I can do all different things with it. You know, that's what I prefer. What does it take it for you to make it work? How much prep time do you say to yourself, I need to get into this character? And is it the film itself that dictates that? Um, well, it's a little bit of the film. It's a little bit of the budget. It's, you know, the shooting time. It's if they call you tonight and say you got to shoot, you know, in two days. It's not much time. Not much time. But when you do have, when you know that you're taking off, that you're going to have like, you know, four or five weeks or something like that to do it, um, you know, you dive in and you learn everything that you can. I mean, the more you know, the less surprises when you're on the set. Because even though the script, everything's worded on the script and it says it that way, you step on the set and the director might uh, just uh, change it a little bit. Well, we thought we we're going to do it this way. Or can you use these words instead? So you got to be able to uh, roll with that. So the more knowledge you have going in, the more prep you have going in, uh, the easier it is for you when, once you're uh, in front of the camera. Is there ever a time when you have a script, you're realizing it's not, you're not feeling it, and you add lib, and it works out actually better? Yeah, absolutely. There's, not every script is well written. You know? I mean, how, how they, <laughs> the secrets come out. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny because um, uh, lots of scripts will get greenlit, you know, which means they get the money and they're going to go up. You right. Know, they're going to start shooting. Um, I'll read the script and I go, "How the hell did this get the money?" You know, it's not all that great. So you try and make it as best you can for you, you know, as yourself, as part of the team. You know, right. You're contributing to a team. Absolutely. It's a collaborative effort. Um, and then often you go on the set. Some directors and writers will say, "Play with it. Go ahead. What, do you, what would you What would you rather say, or what do you think you'd rather do?" Um, and those are real good uh, writers and directors. Some are like, "Don't change the exclamation point. Don't change this comma." Um, that's a little tight because then you know instead of giving them all the colors of the alphabet, you know. I'm saying alphabet and rainbow yes. and the same thing. You just give them A, B, C as opposed to A through Z. You know, right. If they just say, stand here and say this. So your job is to make that, even if they say it's just A, B, C, your job is to make that live and breathe. You know? do, do you feel that's more of a challenge when it's that strict? Yeah, it's just not as fun. You know, <laughs> it's not as fun. Um, there, so it's a, it's a little bit more of a challenge. And sometimes when, you know... You know, you got your job is to do what sure. they say. So if you can make it work within the parameters that they say to your satisfaction and to their satisfaction, and there's, you know, there's um, that's a you know that's a good thing. That's right. a great thing. And that's a sense of, of accomplishment. Um, and you never know if you don't give it a shot the way they want it, uh, and you just want to do it your own way, then you kind of. The, uh, you, you, you can be difficult <laughs> and people won't understand it. So the thing is that um, try it their way. And if it doesn't work and you try it like crazy, you say, hey, enough, cut. Can we please try it this way? And maybe they don't hire you again, but you I'm can't sure they would expect that. that coming from you, Mike. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, every, listen, everybody's on, everybody's on. <laughs> There's all different levels. Yes, you know, there are. From the stars right on down, and you know, um, of, of uh, people with influence and stuff like that. So, you know, um, the whole thing with actors is you want to you want to work again. You want your next job. You want that of kind of thing. So you got to be a team player and a good soldier. Absolutely. What's next for Mike Raspoli? I, you know, I just did a few films last yes. year. Some uh, uh, some interesting uh, low budget ones. I did a I did a play last year for a few months in the summer. Um, I'm on this show called The Deuce on HBO. Excellent. We start our second season. Uh, we just, we're going to start shooting that. And um, the first season went over really well. So, you know, I'll be busy. That's I'll fantastic. Busy, so it's all good. Um, I do want to say one Please. thing, though, because um, I'm just, you know, I'm going to say this because I, I was not, I was on The Sopranos. Yes. But only in a few episodes. But um, when I talked about going to work, you know, like when you like to go to work and stuff like that as a favorite, it was great going to work. Even just those, I think I might have been on four episodes. That was a great place to go to work because of all the guys who were there. Vinny, right. Paul, um, you know, of course, you know, James and the rest of them, Michael and, and Tony Sirico and everybody. Um, that was a fun place to go because everybody was there to like, you know, get it done and create. 
you know. It's got to be a great feeling. It was great. Yeah, it was. That was real nice. So that was a uh, that was a special time. But again, I did four episodes. You know. So. But you These know, guys went. Uh, you know, for ten years. Sometimes great things happen in small packages. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on thank the show, you. Mike. This it's is just, great. Oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. I really appreciate you stopping by and gives us a little insight of what's going on in your life and Sounds good. I place of Hollywood. It. You're so welcome. Thanks, Thanks, Rodney. You're so welcome. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. The No Excuse Show, my very special guest, Mike Raspoli. We'll see you next time.